Hey guys, uh, welcome to part three of hosting a Rust dedicated server with Oxide Mods. Um, if you haven't seen the previous two, I recommend going and checking those out so you can be up to speed with the rest of the class, basically. Um, so get, jumping right ahead to part three is installing, or installing Rust modded server files and the plugins that go with them to make the game better. So, if you've already gotten your Rust server set up in your folder, uh, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose which mods you want to use. Now, the mods that you can choose from as of right now are Oxide, Rust++, which is Magma, Rust Essentials, and Fogrite. Or Fogrite? I don't even know how to pronounce it. Uh, one of those two. Now, the most commonly used one is Oxide. It's just well accepted and well rounded with everything using LUA plugins. You know, it's awesome. It's great. It's what I use. Uh, Rust Plus Plus Magma has officially been outdated and overwritten by Fogrite. Now, Fogrite basically uses Magma plus a few other things to make it work. Now, I've tried using Fogrite, I've tried using Rust Plus Plus, and they both gave me tons and tons of problems. And not gonna lie, Oxide gave me a little bit of problems to start with, but eventually got that fixed thanks to the great community. So uh, to go to that community, you can actually go to the link provided to find them. It's rustoxide.com. I recommend making an account there. Um, also, you can check out their forums at the link at the bottom. Um, so once you go ahead and do that, I provided a link to download the Oxide server mods itself. So go ahead and click on that link. Um, and it's server 1.18. Now this was just released, and so not much people, you know, independent people have this server mod. Uh, it was mainly provided out to GSPs as you know their specific exclusive files, so people can use their servers. But now that give, this is given to a lot of other people, you'll probably see a few other servers popping up here and there. Uh, but Oxide 1.18 is the latest, and most plugins on their website are already updated for it. So you're good to go there. So once you've downloaded it, you'll see it right here. Uh, what you need to do is go into it and go to where you see the Rust server data. You'll see that a couple of the folders line up are just Rust server data does. Select it all, copy, go in here and paste. It's going to ask you to overwrite. Say yes, yes, copy and replace. And bang, you have officially installed Oxide on your Rust server. Now, just because you've installed it doesn't mean it's going to work. And this is where I've had the most trouble with it um, and finally got help from the awesome community to help get it working again. So I'm going to show you what, what it looks like, and you'll see the difference. Uh, once you load it up, your server again, um, go ahead and see it right here. See, it says Oxide, loading legacy, loading library, loading plugins. That's what it says, and this is the tricky part because that makes people think that it's loaded all of the it's loaded your modded server now it didn't as you can see it's just gonna go through the standard procedure all the way till server initialized um, but that's what confused me for the longest time is I thought it was all working because I saw oxide up here but it's not so once it's finished loading uh, you can go into your server like normal run around and you're not gonna be doing anything different it's still a vanilla game you have no mods, nothing installed, but you have the server set up for you. It's not working, but I'm about to show you how to make that work as well. Right, thanks to the awesome community on Rust Oxide's website, um, what happens was they created a bat file for us. Now, bat, short for batch. Uh, they created a file that helps initialize a modded server. So what we saw is a vanilla server, even though this file's here, it wasn't called when the server was made. So to do that, what you're going to do is create a batch file. Now, you can start this off just in Notepad, or what I use is, uh, I use Sublime Text. So load it up, load up this batch file in your favorite text editor. I'm going to use Sublime Text for visual purposes. And this is what it looks like. Now this is a bunch of, you know, basic code written, you know, for parameters and whatnot. So when you initialize this, instead of hitting right here, Instead of doing Rust server from now on, you're actually going to be double clicking this batch file. Now you put the batch file in, you just copy it and put it in your uh, server folder where the Rust server application is, and there, and that's what you're going to be double clicking. So go ahead and copy this exactly, well not necessarily exactly, uh, hostname, 
this is what you can change up instead of it being just default rust test server you can make it cool awesome server join blocks and then keep the port the same everything else copy identical except for max players depending on what your internet connection is you can change that up um, you can make that as many as you want this is obviously lets the max players join your server and then this is directories um, f that are very very needed so make sure let's just you copy this one exactly and once you've gotten that all copied and whatnot you can go ahead and save it and then write anything you want it to start with you can just say oxide server dot bat make sure it's in all files and go ahead and hit save right now we put that in the desktop um, you can close it it's right here um, so just go ahead and cut it paste it in here so if done right go ahead and double click it it loads oxide and the proper way and loads the directories and everything just how you're supposed to do it and then bam What's the best part about using this batch file is it doesn't actually load that extra Rust window. So it's actually make everything run a little bit faster. Server's initialized, and this is your official server that's ran. I'm going to go ahead and show you where the plugins go so you can actually have your mods. So go ahead and you can just close that at any time. It saves and closes. Now, when you want to use plugins, I have a link at the bottom to download just a starter set of plugins for you that are awesome. And I just have a starter oxide plugins. They're uh, .lua files. So what you want to do is go ahead and put them in the save folder, Oxide, Plugins, right where Oxide Core is. Go ahead and just copy them in there and paste. Now if your batch file is set up correctly and you put those in the correct spot and everything is running solid for you so far, if you double click your server batch file, you'll see it started loading all the plugins. Again, all of these are customizable. They're not set in stone, and the only way you could customize them is plop them in your plugins folder, load your server, and once you've loaded your server over here and save Oxide, you'll see data, and then once you hit data, this is where all your stuff is. This is how you edit them. You just open them up, and then bang, they're right here. Now this looks a little bit, I don't know, intimidating to some people, I guess, but it's actually pretty simple once you look at it. Um, this is Oxman, and then basically, this is when you start the server, it lets you do the help and change all the stuff for a list of commands and things like that, like welcome, blah, blah, blah. You can say welcome to the server, the server is blank, you can customize that. You know, this server is awesome, and the bang, when they do it, all you do, you want to replace the, just words specifically in these files. If you change anything like a comma or a colon or anything like this, it's going to be totally corrupt and you won't be able to you know, use it. You just basically got to recopy it in there. And then delete the, you have to delete this configuration file. If you ever mess up anything, you got to delete your configuration file and save Oxide Data, delete it, and then just load it again. And it'll give you a brand new configuration file that you can mess with again. So when you finish those up, you just save it and then bang. Resource Manager, this one's a little bit different. Um, when, with this one, it's a, it, I messed up a little bit trying to do it, but just looking at it, I'll just give you a general look of what it is. Let's just say you look down, you just find what you want to be getting the resource from. Say we're just saying a bear, or let's go down to bear A, chicken, mutant bear, mutant wolf, or here we go. Let's just start with the or. Whenever you want to mine something, normally you'll be getting two minimum max five ores from the ore itself. Um, a good way of doing, um, you know, a good way of amplifying it, I'd say to start off, if you want it to just be a really good, fun server, you can just multiply everything by 10. And to do that, you have to do gather efficiency, 10 times 10, and you have to do the minimum and maximum all times 10. If you multiply this one times 10 and this one times 5, it may not work properly. So I just make sure you do everything by 10, easy by just adding zeros. The minimum, or the minimum and maximum metal ore you can get from this ore 1 is 20 to 50, 30, 40, 80, 100. Save it. I'll show you, you know, you'll, well, once you hit an ore, you'll see, but good there. I'll show you all the ores just so you can see that we actually made a difference. Bam. 
bang save it and then you're good to go you can minimize it or close it and <clears throat> once you've just edited those go ahead and la launch your oxide server and once it's ready see as you can tell right when it finishes initializing boom your server name is what it's going to show up here how I named it cool awesome server join bang and then you can see up here in a little bit of details max players is 50 and this is just a little bit of customization that you can do so far in that batch file you can do a lot more customizing but I'm going to show you an easier way of doing it I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, what the server looks like so far also another quick thing which I think you guys will appreciate um, is once you've done the console command and then did net connect um, usually which happened for me is it loaded up in the history if you go to the history your server should be there and even though it's there on your history other people still probably won't be able to see it until you do what we're gonna show you in the later videos of how to allow you know, pop this up on the server but you personally can double click it instead of doing net connect you don't have to memorize that you just double click and then bang as you can see connected you're connected to your server your cool awesome server so far all modded up so just with a little bit we've had and um, once it loads I'll just show you a little bit of the things that we've been that we initialized boom mods are working instead of getting one stone each hit gives me a lot of things ten times the amount actually so boom makes crafting and everything a ton easier get a lot more things out of that so we can tell that worked so you know that all this works so thanks for watching this video uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and, uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop up the video to the previous video at the top left, the link to the next video at the top right, uh, subscribe button right down here at the bottom half. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the other videos yet, you're probably lost, or unless you just wanted to skip this one, go ahead. And But I recommend checking those out. The links are going to be in the description. Uh, links to all the files that you needed for this video are going to be in the description as well. Um, and again, thank you for watching. Subscribe, it really helps out. And tune in next time for the next part.